Hi, Carolina. Hello. Good evening to you. My name is Nicolette. I am the creator for the podcast titled You're Worthless. Read that again. The juxtaposition of your very soul. First up, thank you very much for reaching out uh, to be interviewed today with me on my show. I am truly honored and humbled. And when I read your profile, there's something that is a common denominator between the both of us, which is hypnotherapy. And when I saw it, I was like, okay, I have to get Dr. Carolina on because that is what I'm doing at the moment. So for the benefit of our listeners, I'd like to read a bit of your introduction before we go right into our conversation. So, hey everyone, we have Dr. Carolina Fisher here with us. Carolina is a trained medical doctor that decided to train as an RTT hypnotherapist. So, for the benefit of our listeners, RTT stands for Rapid Transformational Therapy, popularized by Marissa Pierre. This is because she found out personally how transformative this. She found out how she had worked her entire adult life with therapists for her own life when she found methods that work with the subconscious and transformation really started to happen in her life. So, I mean, short and sweet, but let's give it up for Dr. Carolina Fisher. Yay! <laughs> so, Dr. Carolina, tell us, before we go jump into business, what was it like growing up as a Carolina? Carolina Fisher. Mm-hmm. What was it growing up? Um, I grew up in a very small village, and uh, I loved it. You know, I really loved the neighbor. Like the sorry, the neighbor there. It was so beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful. Still, is in Austria, right, on the border. Oh of my Hungary. god, that's one of my bucket list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, and not only right. I grew up there, no mountains. So it's really it's very oh. flat on the border to Hungary, so it's very unknown, right? Because usually we think skiing and then mountain climbing and mountains and um it it was lovely i just always felt it was too small for me i wanted to live somewhere else and i feel in new york like once i found out new york, i knew that my place. <laughs> and so you know um as soon as i could i moved to new york actually as soon as i had a really amazing opportunity and how was it growing up? It was, for me, it was definitely um, too small, as I said. And uh, just for me, also too little inspiration intellectually, I want to say. Right? I mean, yeah, you know, but still, there's no, there's not so much active cultural life. You know, yeah. I just. Uh, You're looking for adventure. Yeah. Yeah, I think looking back now, I was looking for adventure and I was looking for more. Uh, I just really more. Like, I mean, all I could say at that point, right, and that was I didn't have access to internet when I knew that already. Right? And so I didn't even know what was more, but I knew it. I want, wanted more, right? Something else. I wanted to experience new things. Mm, mm, mm. I love it because I am a person who's always after the next adventure in life as well and I could never sit still but right now I am in Kuala Lumpur Malaysia so I'm also as we speak looking out where do I go next from here tell us your backstory tell us your backstory Carolina like what was the move that made you go from Vienna to um, New York right now were there any other places that you lived before yeah I mean like I said, I really just wanted to always get out and, um, yeah, experience new things, really also community-wise. And yeah. And then I went to Brazil when I was 19 for a social, you know, community project. I worked at an Ayrton Senna kindergarten there. And then I always wanted to end up in New York. There was kind of like a deep knowing. <laughs> But I didn't know how to, right? And I was, I was also, and I still am into acting. That's basically my second passion next. And I saw this acting conservatory in New York, and I thought, oh, that would be it. Like I wanted to study there. And then I, you know, I just thought about it and about what it would um, take and how much it would cost. And I am usually very much like 
you know, I'm going to make it. If I want it, I can make it. But there I was like, okay, maybe in my next life, right? Not maybe, I mean, it's going to happen in my next life because this life, it's just too many things that would need to align, right? So I let it go and not my passion for healing and for acting, but I let that go. And then about 10 years after I let that go, I was on the Austrian version of who wants to be a millionaire. And mm. I thousand dollars i mean it was seventy five thousand euros and that was at that time hundred thousand dollars my god <laughs> knew that was for new york you know because i always wow want to come here just with one ticket and try to find my luck one way <laughs> yeah i just always knew i wanted to come i mean one way ticket actually i had a one way ticket when i came but i wanted to come with a with a purpose where I was integrated in a society, where in a community, right? Because mm -hmm. I knew I, I, I didn't want to just, you know, uh, yeah, I'm very courageous, I think, but I, I knew I, I needed a yeah, community. So I had that then because I auditioned for the school and I got invited to study there. And that's how I came to New York. First, actually, LA and then New York. And yeah. And I knew I would stay. And then, yeah. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's so many milestones that you've hit along the way. When was when did you fly out to? When, when did you win? And when did you decide to fly out? <laughs> I mean, the thing was, I had really already planned. Like, I had planned to go to. So, at the time, I was actually dating someone in Las Vegas. And I had planned to fly out to meet him in person. Mm -hmm. And I think I had mm -hmm. planned February 2010. And then December 2000, I won on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Like, it was really so aligned, right? I mean, it was yes. great. Looking back now, actually, I'm just realizing how, how aligned that was, right? Because that opened my door. Because then in Las Vegas, I have to say, I was very bored. If you... Yeah, I mean, it's it's obvious that there's a lot going on. It's like so, but it's, uh, yeah, it's it's not. It was a lot was, and nothing at the same time going on. <laughs> I totally get you. <laughs> to LA from there, and I, and then I started acting classes in LA at that school that I always wanted to end up at, and totally not realizing, you know, that it had come full circle. I, I wasn't aware that it was the same school that I actually always wanted to attend. And then, oh my gosh, in Los Angeles, I needed to go back to Austria to do that two years program because I needed a student visa. And then I also found out that I, if I wanted to finish med school because I had one and a half years left, I also needed to do that before 2013. So I did that before moving to New York. So oh. I back graduate from med to finish med school in Austria and after that I went to New York my god what an inspiring story so you've been in New York for about 11 years now oh, now I came 2010 you came 2010 but then so, you went back I went back yeah no I came for the school 2010 so sorry one second how did that go wow now I'm finding I'm I'm not <laughs> Definitely was end of 2009 and uh, 2010, I moved here. But I think, I think it was like this. I think I, wow, that's, <laughs> and no, September 2010, I came to New York to stay. Like it's 14, it's been 14 it's... years. Wow. I think, okay. I think, you know, just 2010 from January till August. I graduated, I finished med school. I think that was it. Yeah. Or, yeah. That must have. <laughs> yeah. And I think I said, you are Awesome. I mean, I think, you, are you living your life? Are you happy? You look happy. <laughs> yeah. But this, this messes my head a little up now that I got, because it doesn't fully make sense. Because if I won 2009, that was December. 2010 but I came 2010 here yeah but I'm gonna think about that later because that's just boring for someone listening but <laughs> I off one year but I know the year I came here was 2010 and yeah I'm I'm really happy with mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I really I, I, I love it 
jobs. I mean, I knew I wanted to be in New York, right? But I didn't, I had dreams, you know, this or that. And, um, but I didn't have like, oh, it needs to be exactly this or exactly this. But I am happy. Yeah. I really love what I do. And I, I, yeah, I love, you know, working for myself. I love just being. I love that. I love that for you. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm about to follow that footstep. For our listeners, thank you for that background, uh, Carolina. Can you share with us the beauty and the majestic power of RTT hypnotherapy? What is, what is it? Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, so easy to put in words and so hard to put so I can say now, like, for me, I think after I've been practicing, I've opened this business 2017, so I've almost practiced for seven years. And I can say even now, like, it's still like, wow, wow. You know, it just gets better. It amazes better. you all, every time, right? When you unlock something within the person. It's never, you can always grow and you always get new stories. So what I love, I was always, you know, I always wanted to work with new things and create new things and here it's really like every client you have it's a totally unique story even if if two clients have the same issue right but yeah it will come up even if you work with the same clients over a specific time or even if you work like with the same client on the same topic there's always transformation mm-hmm. and i mean mm-hmm. right the, the the name says it rapid transformation of therapy so of course that's transformation but it never gets, I never get bored. You know, it's never, it's just so light, so lively, so alive, so thriving. So just really transformational and going more into detail, right? Because a listener might think, no, yeah, what is she talking about? Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what is she bragging? What are they bragging about? <laughs> yeah, well, what is, you know, what is this so cool compared to the normal therapy? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just talking about it on an emotional level, right? Mm-hmm. But really on a on a factual level, I mean, hypnotherapy, right? I mean, it is obviously a scientifically proven method and Marissa really refined it in the sense that it's really focused on even very rapidly transforming, right? And the session is three hours long, right? And you really focus on an issue and you really go to the root cause of the issue. And you don't treat the symptoms, but you really treat the root cause. And you let the younger self or inner child, depending on how far back we're going to go to find the root cause, right? And we let that younger self express themselves, right? What they really thought in that scene that comes up in that situation, right? That was the reason why there are those specific issues today. And that mm-hmm. in itself transforms everything already, right? And then we reframe it and we transform it and we really plant the seeds of everything that that person wants instead of the issue that we are transforming in the session, right? So it's yes. very simple. And I hope I explained it simply now, like um, in a simple way now. But it, it's very simple and it's very, yeah, so so easy. And easy. Profound. <laughs> It can be hard sometimes because sometimes we even we even don't think that it can be so easy, right? That it can be so sure. light, right? Mm-hmm. Done with so much ease. Like, well, I've had this for so long now. Can it be cured in one session? Or right? And it absolutely yes. doesn't matter to change the belief that wired in you. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I just love it so much. Same. Me too. <laughs> And it's like, it's, it's, and when people go into RTT, it's essentially a partnership between you and the therapist uh, himself or herself. So it is not the job of the therapist to ensure that you are um, cured, but you have to participate as well. Because again, this also coming back to what I'm, I'm connecting back, I'm connecting to my next question is the, misconceptions of hypnosis because if you were to divide the two words hypnotherapy means hypnosis and therapy the carolina can you share with our 
<clears throat> listeners like what are the common misconceptions of hypnosis and why do you think hypnosis is one of the key things that we need to implement for the success of RTT? So that's an interesting question. I really, really get misconceptions, I have to say. Um, I think people usually know some about hypnosis already. Some even From TV. <laughs> yeah. Or and it's usually a bad thing. But I sometimes say, but I'm more apprehensive. I say, you know, it's not like, because somebody said that to me and I, I don't even like saying it, but I don't know how else to say it because I, I don't want to like put voodoo down, right? Because I think, exactly. you know, that is up out there. I heard before, you know, hypnosis, hypnotherapy, uh, hypnotherapy is not like voodoo. And so I sometimes use that. And really just because I can't find a better word, because some people are really just feel like, oh, I'm going to put them into some kind of, you know, um, magic um, spell. <laughs> and all of a sudden that issue is transformed. And that's not at all what it is, right? Like you said, it's so empowering. Mm -hmm. it's really, mm -hmm. I usually say, I'm going to be your guide, your guide through yourself, you know, and we are mm -hmm. transforming what you want to transform. And the work is really done in you. Like I am mm -hmm. helping, I'm mm -hmm. supporting really present I'm, I want to say I'm definitely important for that journey right because I can see from the outside right uh, and I can hold the space for everything coming up but without you I can do nothing right like you That's are true. doing the energetic transformational work inside of you so it's really I, I love it it's so empowering and there's misconceptions I really haven't found really many yet though there was not i've had a client once that wanted to work with me and she wanted to quit smoking and she was really like can you guarantee it right and i said to her i've i've helped people stop smoking and i have reviews about it right but i cannot guarantee it because i don't know yes. what right i don't know what will happen in the session because this is like we are working with human being right but mm -hmm. he basically Right. Yes. I mean, um, even a doctor, if I go for a regular operation, depends on what is inside of me. Right. They might find something that doesn't Correct. allow operation or that needs them to do something else. Right. So, <laughs> and that was the first misconception I found. I've only had it with her where I said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm also not comfortable working with you. Right. Because it feels like, you really want me to do There's that. There's a pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And then and if it fails to meet the expectation, yeah. then you're going to, it's, it's not going to be good for the both of us. It's going to be detrimental exactly. to my practice as a therapist and to you. Perhaps you'd also go out and, and also start planting seeds outside that, you know, hyp hypnotherapy is not as good as they claim to be. And it's very, very important, yeah, yeah, for so people I, to get I, that right. Yeah, exactly. That was a misconception that I had that people, although I always, not always, but sometimes when I feel like they are new and they want to know more, I say, look, it's not hypnosis like you see in circuses or in this where they snap you and then they let you bark like a dog and then you they snap <laughs> you back and you don't even remember what, right? It's not exactly. like, how about old therapy, right? We are... <laughs> We are going to do some things that empower, right? That we want you to know. Now, we want you to be present, right? So, yeah. uh, but we also want you to, right? we want you to be, take responsibility for our side, right? Mm -hmm. That conception I had that people really think, oh, I'm just going to press a button in your subconscious and then you won't smoke. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, how it works you really need to give up that that and transform that right giving up means you're transforming into someone that doesn't smoke in that sense, right and we need to find out why do you smoke today right because mm -hmm. they're all mm -hmm. you know yeah it's so many reasons there must be a payoff otherwise you wouldn't still do it right so, that's right i'm so you have misconceptions and also the second part of the question was what are the oh. what is no. Yeah. No, it's okay. I mean, misconception. That that's 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 actually what what I asked uh, earlier. 
and it, it, it's it's a lot about no it's not a lot it's the meaning that you attach to why you started smoking in in the first place right that's as usually the case one i think the key transformational point for the sessions that i've had with my friends or during my practice session is that that point where they understood why i still carry out this bad habit before because of something 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 well protect all right yeah Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. i love it i love it and then from there on it's it's onward and the next hurdle at, at least for, for, for me or for the client uh, himself or herself is the transformation. Uh, it's the consistency whether they don't, are they going to pick up the same cigarette um, stick or are they going to make wiser choices? Yeah. Well, yeah, that too. I mean, there is a transformation happening, right? That is very, like, you are transformed. So you won't, mm-hmm your cigarette anymore right if you let that transformation really transform you seep in yeah yeah yes but, I mean, there is a transformation happening if you're open to it right because but if you want i i feel like going back to that example i said if you want a guarantee from me it sounds like you don't even want to participate right precisely it's like you're helping to be saved no yeah. so you're wanting you're yeah. you're wanting to be saved instead yeah. of saving yourself yeah exactly yeah it right? can be as simple as, right, I had a client who really came back to a scene where her mother, when she was in her teens, she, the girl, was in her teens and her mother would smoke. Every time her mother smoked, she would be more relaxed and she would ask her daughter, how was school today? Uh-huh. She associated that beautiful time with her mother where her mother finally asked her. So she those smoking off, right? When mm-hmm. you don't right so we yes. always see it in the light what right there is everything that is today that we right always have, if they, mm-hmm. so and with her once she saw that and we could perform that that makes total sense and i mm-hmm. don't that but mm-hmm. now i'm going to conform that right and then in that scene i'm going to say to my mom right my inner picture of my mom you know, mom, I'm, I was so, I cherish those moments that we had together while you were smoking and while you were so relaxed. But I know now you could have all that, also done that without smoking. I now yeah. know I can do that without smoking. I don't smoke and yeah. breathe. Because in the smoking is the breath, right? Usually we smoke or smoke. They are inhaling people, right? I mean, there are so many reasons, of course, it does start not fix factor to it too but mm-hmm. she formed out of it so easily after seeing that right mm. was the reason that held her once she died i love that again i'm mind uh, blown <laughs> by rtc so me preach i mean we, i wouldn't be surprised if there are people who's, who's gonna sign up for rtc after this once this episode airs so <laughs> let's hope for that and spread this all over the world globally back so uh, carolina what is the well, how is heart RTT hypnotherapy different from other modalities of therapy? You mentioned mm-hmm. before you've been doing therapy for your own um for yourself all your life. So mm-hmm. now that you lived it, lived all of them, what what are the differences? Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because I usually would say not, you lived all of them. I mean, that's a big statement, but I really had a lot of different forms of therapy. I did the classic psychoanalysis, talk therapy, family constellation. Yeah, so I there was a lot, yeah. And the difference is that it's really, um, you know, working with the subconscious. That's the difference because talk therapy, right, works with your conscious. And even psychoanalysis, in my opinion, there wasn't that transformational aspect, right? And also not that, subconscious although the focus or the the goal is to go to the subconscious you lie on the couch but i i hadn't had that experience with it so Mm -hmm. i think like with me it started with family constellation where i first tapped into the subconscious right because Mm -hmm. but in a collective way right with families and that's when i was really mind blown for the first time and i think looking back seeing it 
I feel it might have been too much for me at the time. That mm -hmm. really years and years and then I found this, you know, RTT where it's also about the subconscious and then I could accept that I'll or I say I wanna work with it, right? Because I think the first time when I encountered it I really felt physical physically different in my body, mm -hmm. right? I'm such a shift happening subconscious. Um mm -hmm. also it was not so empowered I say that also because I think, yeah, it is a communal, there is a therapist that did that more. Um, I think I was a little bit more overwhelmed. Uh, it was powerful. So, yeah, but that's when I first found out about the subconscious way of working, right? And, and what a difference it makes. I mean, really shift. And then that's when the seed was planted. And then when I found hard to tea, that was like, yeah, wow. That's, this I'm, I'm, this yeah. is what I'm going to do. <laughs> thing is really that it's so different that it works with the subconscious like it works exactly where those things that we usually struggle where it's rooted yeah right. exactly because i like one of my favorite things to say and to just because it's so true right you are like a lot of people come with issues where it's about discipline right like eating consistency yeah also takes consistency right and mm -hmm. they are often like super accomplished you know, I run a family with so many kids and then they are on then uh, career and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you can't tell me you're not disciplined, right? Because they sit there and say, I can't stop eating. I think I'm not disciplined. I'm like, no, there's no way you can't. Like, you are so disciplined. Look at you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I think you get a payoff on a subconscious level. You don't know what it is. As long as you don't know what it is, right? Jung said that, right? I mean, yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like, as long as you, you know, you don't uh, know your subconscious, you don't explore that to the issue. I'm paraphrasing a little. You let it run your life and you call it karma or you call it fate. Oh. And he says fate, but I say karma also because, you know, so many of our religions also have this karma. You know, that's your karma. And next life, you hopefully get a better karma if you live good in this life, right? In, I really feel in through hypnotherapy, you can overcome karma or what we call karma, right? Which proves that it actually might not be karma, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was how we have explained it so far. Right? But those things that a lot of people might have called karma, you can overcome because it's usually just a subconscious pattern of thinking. Yeah. Of pattern of being, and the pattern of thinking creates a pattern of being and that creates a life, right? Your reality. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Love your passion. I can feel you. I can. Your passion is so palpable. Also, it's you amazing. too. Same. Yeah. We're connecting. <laughs> yeah. We need to be in the same space. So I will see you. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not like, I know we are on air now, but I really mean that. I talked to my marketing manager recently and she's like, yeah, if we grow like this, we might need to hire someone and that's going to be new. I, I never thought about that. Like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know how to be a boss, you know, or something like that, you know. And now I'm talking to him, like, I think I would love to work with her. I would love to hire, you know. Carolina, you just made my day. Let's take this offline and I will see you personally face to face <laughs> in the next few months. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you want to. Right? Yeah. Yeah. In the past. That was really coming up now for me because you have so much fire. Oh, and I love that and I love working with one in the same space right that has that also right because that I think that's uh, just very connecting right you don't have to have it you just have to have a passion uh, if the passion shows in a similar way I think that's very aligned <laughs> you heard it live guys <laughs> if this airs by the time this airs probably something something great would have happened between the two of us now we probably are colleagues already <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for that, Carolina. Oh, definitely, we'll take it. Yes, yes, I'm going to I'm gonna go after you. So, uh, who is the audience for RTT hypnotherapy and why? Wow, such a good question. You know, I think really everyone, I mean, I think everyone should do hypnotherapy and I think we could all use something to, to uh, get our full potential um, materialized out of us. Really, everyone, I think, 
So let me see. Like definitely, you have to have. Let's let's uh, cut it down. Like into a for hypnotherapy, you definitely have to have a will, right? You want to have do it, right? Yeah. Yes. At, or come where they are like, oh, my, my daughter or my son needs it, right? Mm-hmm. Talk to your daughter or son, right? Like, if you don't want it, nobody can force you. I mean, nobody should be able to force you into therapy in general, right? But maybe That's right. Uh, you need to go to talk therapy. Go off to my job, whatever. But the therapy, you don't pull it. Yes. Yeah, right? Like, not doing right like then mm-hmm. you need one right? that's the only condition. yes because you can be because now that you said that right? people ask me sometimes can i be on medication but pharma, yeah you get no you know no condition exactly mm-hmm. yeah as i was saying uh, i also had like practice sessions and with with some um not family and friends close friends and then you can really tell when somebody's open to it mm-hmm. and when some versus somebody that is closed. Like you can tell like, oh, okay, um, I don't know how where this is gonna go, but mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just gonna it's like you can tell when somebody's guarding mm-hmm. and it is it is very, very important to come with this with an open 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 heart, I would say. Yep. So whatever happens that comes up and because if you're a therapist, you need to you you will only you are privy to their information to whatever that comes up. I think people are afraid of that, and mm-hmm. especially if they're close friends. So, and also this is why people often go to other people independent from from their close relationships because mm-hmm. they don't yeah. know and they will be judged. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, well, yeah. They- like that's too close, you know, that information. Yes. Is, and I think that's their prerogative, I think you call it in English, mm-hmm. right? I, mean, mm-hmm. they bring, I think that's also totally okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. I think really, yeah, depending on your relationships, right? Mm-hmm. People. Carolina, what is your message to those people that wants to try hypnotherapy, particularly RTD, but still skeptical at this mm-hmm. very moment? I would say, you know, if you really want to try it, I mean, the time will come. But if you want to speed up that time, I think just listen to videos of Marissa Peer. Oh, yes. No. Just think about about the life you could have fast. It's just really so powerful. Mm-hmm. You being into what you want to have next, right? So if you have any goal, if you have anything in the way that goal, you know, the faster you do it, the faster you're going to be transformed into what you want to live. Yes. So I would yeah. Really. You know, funny thing, when you were saying that, I had an epiphany, a, a, a mini epiphany that I think how I am, I am also transitioning out from my ninth, which I have already transitioned out from my corporate job and now fully setting up my own practice and and my own coaching. And who knows, maybe working with you in the next few, in the near future. And it's like, I have never, I've always had the feeling of wanting to be, wanting to dictate my own time. But at the same time, doing so by being of service to others. And because why I say that, because I have gone through my own fair share of trauma, which I have so-called healed by my... I wouldn't say so-called because I really did go out there and try see what works for me. And it wouldn't be just one, but it's a culmination of everything. But I would say when you really go it, into your subconscious that's when the magic happens because it unlocks everything it, you understand what went wrong and why it went went wrong but then more importantly how you want to create your new reality your new future and that's where people are most afraid to go into because they say that i it's too big of a dream i don't think i can make it <laughs> but you shouldn't you know that's because that's where 
you're here because of what? You're not here to just avoid trauma. You're here to also thrive, grow right. and thrive. Right? Yeah. So, so it, it, yeah, I, I, I cannot wait for the lives that all of our therapists are going to be changing. And also we are the walking examples of that. Yeah. Carolina, what is next for you? Really just um, continuing working with people, growing my practice. I mean, just, right? That's that's beautiful and big anyways. Yeah, that's, that's the exciting thing. Yeah, that wake, makes me wake up. Um, I love that. But <laughs> really... Do you know why, why, why I'm smirking is because, you know, when you would say telling me about your your backstory because I have the same dream I, I actually want to be I my dream is to go to America and actually settle there so it's either LA or New York <laughs> right now you're the living example in New York so oh. I it, it's close I feel it I feel it and then oh, oh, sorry where did you Malaysia Kuala Lumpur Asia <laughs> Yeah, oh, it, so, <laughs> and, 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 and this, this trip in September is going to be my first trip to the U.S. So I think the reason why I'm talking to a, a lot of people as well, I started my podcast, not, not because of that, but because at the same time, I'm making, okay, backstory, Carolina, I started my podcast because um, I wanted to be accustomed to talking to people. Because at the time, I thought that, okay, I needed to be, I needed to feel worthy again, which, you know, I had the the wrong mindset that people should expect, should receive the best of my service when Mm -hmm. they pay me. So I practiced through podcasting. And lo and behold, I actually enjoy doing this. And I'm going to, I'm doing this besides um, therapy because it, it's what I do. I would say best. I I like talking to people, and I'm. I think I'm pretty good at it. And the second thing is that in therapy and 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 soon coaching that I want to do with with people, it's like hitting all of the birds with one stone. Like I get to help people, and I dictate my time. And and fingers crossed, hopefully you get to be in a community where you know it's vibrant and such as yourself. You know, so that that's truly my magic one. Life without a problem. So yes, and and I think that's also answering to you see the passion is because yeah, it's somewhere somewhat dormant within me the last ten years. But then I said, okay, let's see. Oh, scarcity mindset, fear mindset. Let me just stay with the nine to five because it's safe. So yeah, <laughs> push comes to shove, I have to step up. So, <laughs> Carolina, we're we're gonna pivot to a self worth question because my podcast talks a lot about self worth. So the question for you um today is: Many people struggle with feelings of inadequacy despite their achievements. What mm-hmm. advice would you give to someone? Experiencing imposter syndrome in a high-pressure environment. Mm-hmm. I would really advise them to, you know, again, words uh, from Marissa here to just tell yourself, I mean, of course, to do RTT hypnotherapy sessions, but on a daily basis, to telling yourself you are enough. Because what I find over and over... Yes. Bringing this back. Bringing my cushion back. You are worthy and you are enough to our yeah. listeners that's watching oh. this. Yeah, it's really that simple. But uh, consistency in that, right? Uh, I I work so often with my clients with self-worth. And it's really, yeah, they are doing, like you just said, I mean, it's, yeah, you could call it imposter syndrome, right? Because they are doing amazing work so successful right when you look at it from the outside but they need to be reminded right you would need to say to them how much did you work the last two weeks how much did you make how much did you you know is it not what you always wanted to do and they would say yes it is and then you would be like wow but they can't feel it right Mm. they still have it in them well 
you were not good enough or you are this or that, right? And well, you are now, uh, you won't achieve anything, right? Because you don't do this right or you don't, right? Or I don't know, you just feel something. So now somebody tells you this, right? Um, and it's so sad. And I just thought now that you asked these questions about more like, like uh, really globally, why is that, right? Uh, why, who started um, yeah. feeling unworthy and then giving it, like passing it on from generation, right? Why hmm. are we not born with self worth, right? Why or why uh, do we? Why don't we keep it, right? Because I think we might be born with it, but why don't we keep it? Why do, um, and I mean, I have never thought about that really, but just like the last generation, right? Where they, and then you understand it and then you can forgive and then you can give yourself that. But in the end, it's really that usually parents love their kids and mm -hmm. they do the best they can. And mm -hmm. so if they couldn't, they, were not like motivating yourself, not feeding it, then chances are that they didn't have it either, right? And that they mm -hmm. didn't have it. So mm -hmm. you could immediately go to I'm worth, I am anything, right? No doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that as the, our thoughts grow, grew up, you know, uh, with that mindset, then our thoughts are wrong because then mm -hmm. we'll think every day we are not worthy and we are not enough, right? No matter what we do. Yeah. No matter you collect all your cars, all your your money you and achieve. your status. Thank you for that, Carolina. So yeah. what is your heart's greatest wish? Wow. Ooh. I mean, it's very, I, I almost feel a little, um, a little guilty or selfish saying that because this is a podcast about, um, you know, worthless, uh, you are not, right? I mean, sorry, not exactly uh, those words, but, and I just come with a very personal uh, wish. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my greatest wish at the moment is to own my own place in New York City with my family. So, oh, I mean, no, that is not selfish at all, Carolina. Yeah, but no. the format of what we are doing here, I would ideally think, oh, somebody that would give an interview about RTT would probably say that everybody in the world gets an RTT session and can be a more fulfilled person, right? But no, you're that, uniquely you. Well, <laughs> I would love to have a place, my own place in New York as well. <laughs> For me to travel between Malaysia and US. Yeah, so. yeah I want to read. Fingers crossed. I want to <laughs> something pass on to my kids so they can, um, yeah, like a family. I want to start a family. I get family play. Yeah. So I love that. And my wishes. I'm sending all the love and the light your way. You Thank will get you. it. Thank it's already in the making. Yeah. So, Carolina, do you have a mantra that you live by? Wow. There's so many great quotes and thoughts out there. If I had to choose one, I think live and, live and let live. In German, we say lassen. I don't know if they have it here too. But basically, let be other people live their lives how they want to live, right? And you live yours how you want to live. Like, so, so. right? Accept everyone how they are. You have no judgment. Or you want. I'm letting that sink in. Yes, that is a powerful quote. I mean, it's simple, but it's got yeah. deep, deep meaning to it. Is there anything that keeps you up at night or do you sleep well? You sleep well? Well, <laughs> yeah, really awesome. well. Awesome. Yes. Okay. If you could create a quote right now for you uh, to leave to the audience listening and the world as your legacy. What would it be? It would be a quote. I might need your help. It would be a quote really expressing that like it's never too late. I mean, that is a quote already, right? I could use that, but it, I want to encompass more than just that. Like a quote that would really show the power of RTT hypnotherapy and say, you know what? It doesn't matter what happened in the past. You can still have everything you want. 
because you often go with that, well, I grew up like this and this happened to me and this, and I don't mean to say that condescendingly now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't do this. That's why this can't happen. That's why I can't have this, right? But again, this whole with transforming karma, right? Or what we might call karma, really the power of transformation. I would maybe say the quote, believe in the power of transformation, no matter how you access that, right? I mean, I know RTT is a great version to achieve that, but if you find something else, great. But your life is so transformable. Like, yes. I don't even know the word, but you can transform anything, any circumstance. Exactly. And if you so choose at this very moment, you, your life can change tomorrow even, you know, not in a drastic yeah. way, but if you want to have that big yeah. dream, it will align for you only if you believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Believe and if you also know that there is a power to form into that. And it can be yes. really mm -hmm. where you see things, believe those that that way you realize that, that way and then become a form of you realize that's why I have that in goes away, right? Formed in that moment. Really that power. Yeah. I love that. Yes. <laughs> I hope our listeners are able to feel the energy and not just um saying not just listening and not um, hearing, I would say, instead of listening to what we are trying to get out there. But like, um, who said Albert Einstein? I don't know who quoted, but everything is energy. Nikola Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> Nikola Tesla said everything is energy. So I hope they can take away something from our uh, episode today. So Carolina, uh, how can people reach out to you? My website is www whyhypnotherapy.com and the why is w-h-y okay no. <laughs> not why not the letter y no. w-h-y okay i'll be sure to include that in the caption once this airs thank so. you so <laughs> you're welcome and there you have it guys you heard it from the person herself dr carolina fisher before we close off, Dr. Carolina, I would like to thank you personally for the work that you're doing for the world and for advancing every step of the way despite the challenges, creating trails for those that will come after you. This has been that one podcast with that controversial name, You Are Wordless. Read that again, the juxtaposition of your very soul. Now, if you find yourself thinking that you are wordless, for the listeners, you are not alone. But more importantly, ask yourself a level deeper. If I am worthless, then why the heck am I here? It is because your soul have chosen to be here energetically all the way from the ethers. And for that reason itself, you are worthy and you are enough. This has been Dr. Carolina Fisher, your guest of the day, and Nick Nyaras, your host, signing off. Thank you, Dr. Carolina. Thank you. That was so fun. So much pleasure.